Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. 23-year-old man charged for a fatal stabbing of woman during argument. The police on Tuesday charged a 23-year-old security guard for the stabbing death of a woman during an argument and then dumping her body into bushes in Portland. Charged with murder is Austin Mitchell, otherwise called CG, of Hague District in Trelawney. Dead is 25-year-old Shanice Burke of Hague District in Trelawney and St. Margaret's Bay in Portland. The incident happened on Wednesday, October 25th. The police report that an altercation developed between Burke and Mitchell, during which a knife was used to inflict a stab wound to her neck. Mitchell then allegedly transported Burke to Forest Road in Portland, where he dumped Burke's body into bushes. The resident stumbled on the body about 9.50 a.m. on Saturday, October 28th, and summoned the police. Following an intensive investigation, an operation was carried out on Saturday, November 11, during which Mitchell was taken into custody. He was charged on Tuesday, November 14, and is stated to appear in the Trelawney Parish Court at Duncan on Tuesday, November 21. Breakdown in negotiation over compensation package causes split between Tom Sahiro and Coach Says Management Team. The extremely excessive remuneration package requested by Shaniko Osborn to continue as coach of five-time Olympic gold medalist Elaine Thompson Hero has been confirmed as the reason the two have parted ways. A release from Thompson Hero's management team and the sports management on Wednesday stated that a breakdown in the negotiations over a compensation package resulted in the coach's contract being terminated. The professional separation came about due to a breakdown in the negotiations and a compensation package for the services that would be provided by Coach Osborne, the release read. It continued, the package proposed by the former coach by any measure of what is the norm for such services were extremely excessive and without any flexibility to negotiate by the other party. Collectively, we had no choice but to seek the services of another coach. News broke earlier this week that Tom Sahiro, who won the last two women's 100-meter gold medalists at the Olympic Games, had not extended the tenure of Osborne, who guided her training at the end of the last season. Osborne, who was part of the MVP TC setup when Tom Sahira trained there, guided the national record holder through the latter part of the season, including her participation in the silver medal winning women's 4x100 meter release at the World Championships in Bukapest, Hongura. Tom Sahira had said that Osborne was hired on a temporary basis and the situation would be reviewed at the end of the season. The release also said there was an ongoing search for a coach who would prepare Thompson Hero for the upcoming season. Once our search is complete and a final decision is made, we will once again use this medium to officially notify the fans, followers, supporters, and general public. Rest assured that the best interest of Mrs. Elaine Thompson Hero supersedes all other concerns and all decisions will be made to fortify her legacy as one of the worst premier female athletes, the release concluded. Two men sentenced in the Home Circuit Court for the role in the murder of MP Poswell daughter and the child's mother. Two men who pleaded guilty to involvement in the murder of opposition lawmaker Philip Poswell's 10 month old daughter and her mother were sentenced in the Home Circuit Court. The first man, Richard Brown, who admitted to kidnapping and murdering Joshua Patterson and her infant daughter Sarah Powell on September 9, was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment at hard labor on each of the two counts of murder. He was also sentenced to one year and ten months for each count of kidnapping. The sentences are to run concurrently, and Brown will not be eligible for parole until he has served 20 years in prison. The second man, Rashawn Miller, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to kidnap, accessory before the fact of murder, and misprison of felony. Miller was sentenced to seven years and ten months imprisonment for each of the two accessories before the fact of the murder charges. He was also sentenced to two years and ten months imprisonment at hard labor for each of the two counts of conspiracy to kidnap charges. Miller is to serve one year and ten months in prison at hard labor for the misprison of felony charges. His sentences are to run concurrently. The sentencing was settled under the Plea Negotiations and Agreement Act. FBI among international agencies probing bomb threats with JCF. The United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, is among international agencies working with the Jamaican police in the probe into a series of bomb threats which began last week. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang 
says all required resources in the security forces have been mobilized to apprehend the perpetrators. Since last Thursday, several bomb threats have been reported at several institutions, including over 70 schools. The most recent threats were reported to the New Kingston Shopping Center on Tuesday and at an office of the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Dr. Chang says authorities are pursuing the perpetrators aggressively. The minister outlines that various institutions impacted by the threat. He says due to the incident, the authorities will have to expand the emergency operation teams. The police which have been monitoring and responding carefully and supported by the Jamaica Defense Force, specialized agents like CTOC, Jamaica Fire Brigade, the Ministry of Health in the case of the hospital and ODPEM throughout the system, have indicated that based on the nature of the threats, that they were designed to disrupt and create a level of confusion in the society. However, they are being pursued aggressively and all the required resources in the security force have been mobilized to identify and apprehend the perpetrators. We also have the support of our international partners, that include the FBI, which have been active in support from day one. On Monday, nine, Friday, sorry, first two days of that 9th and 10th, there were 73 institutions were impacted, 71 schools, one hospital, one courthouse. And following Monday, some five institutions were impacted, including a commercial center, and yes, and on this Tuesday, similarly, six institutions, five schools and a commercial institution, namely the Kingston Shopping Center, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, and Kingston Wharves. The activities, of course, indicate that we, while we responded and was able to do work and effective guidance to all the schools, provide effective support, we'll have to expand our emergency operating teams in given this level of activity. This kind of activity in some communities have become fairly recurrent, and we'll have to ensure that we expand our teams. 17-year-old charge in connection with armed robbery of taxi driver. A 17-year-old student of Gresham Avenue in Kingston has been charged following his involvement in the alleged armed robbery and assault of a taxi operator in his community on Saturday, October 5th. The student has been charged with robbery aggravation and conspiracy to robbery with aggravation. Reports from the police are that about 3.30 a.m., the taxi operator received a request from a passenger to pick up and transport from the South Camp Road to Halfway Tree. On his arrival at the location, two women who identified themselves as the callers requested his help to put items in the trunk. While in the process of doing so, the taxi operator was pounced upon by the teen and four men who were armed with handguns and machetes. They proceeded to inflict multiple chop wounds on his body, after which they robbed him of his motor car, cash, cell phone, and other personal items. The man managed to escape further injury and reported the matter to the police. He was assisted to hospital where he was treated. The teen was taken to the station by his parents on Thursday, November 2nd, and was positively recognized during an identification parade. He was subsequently charged on Tuesday, November 14. His court date is being finalized. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.